Hi guys, I'm back for another little video, and this time I'm going to do a Transformers one, because it does feel like it's been a while since I've gone back to the good old uh, staple that is the Transformers uh, video, if you would. So we're going to have a look at one of the, the newer toys, well, I say newer, but newer compared to what I would normally do. Uh, we're going to be having a look at Transformers uh, Prime, or Transformers Prid, or Transformers Robots in Disguise, R.I.D. Not the actual R.I.D. series, but... It's a sound wave from the Prime show, so we're going to be having a look at that today. Uh, so yeah, sit back, I hope you enjoy, and uh, yeah, let's get to looking at some toys, shall we? So here he is, Transformers, Robots in Disguise sound wave from the Transformers Prime TV series. We'll take him away though, and have a look at his jet mode first. So just having a look at this jet mode, as you can tell, it's an extremely slender jet. I think this is probably the slimmest jet we've had to date. Even from underneath the toy, you can tell that there's not a huge amount of robot kibble. I mean, you can tell, granted, it's a robot from underneath, but there's not a lot hanging down from it, which is fairly successful, I would say. And there's not a huge amount of colour, unfortunately, to it, just nice bits of uh, pink here and there. For the most part, it's this solid blue colour, with bits of black as well dotted around here and there. Just like the rest of the Decepticons, uh, Soundwave is very muted in his colour scheme. But in this mode, there are a couple of issues which I'd like to point out to you. The first of these problems is that the jet doesn't feel complete. They've got these uh, gaps here, which are... Obvious for transformation and uh, slits here, and this weird kind of blue gloss, which I think might be the plastic. Uh, these parts on the side as well, I would worry could break off in the future if kids aren't careful with it or anything. Uh, and there's also some excess plastic just around some of these areas. I'll try and zoom in. You can see, uh, like there, for example, and just in other places around this toy... Uh, they haven't cleaned off a lot of the excess plastic, and it just looks very untidy, like they kind of rushed it out. Uh, which is a real shame. Um, I would have liked it if they'd taken a bit more time and care with it, but, you know, it, it during the economy it's hard to complain too much. Uh, there's no issues really underneath it, though. Uh, so yeah, let's get this guy, though, and take him to robot mode, I think. So he is Soundwave in his robot mode, and I think the guys at Hasbro did a fairly successful job of recreating the Transformers Prime version of Soundwave here. He doesn't have a huge amount of detail on him, of course, just because he is such a very slender toy. Uh, most of his detail, I suppose, is contained in Laserbeak, which we'll have a little talk about later. Uh, his head sculpt is very good. It's it's blank, as it should be, because that's the kind of character Soundwave is. I would have liked to have seen perhaps some kind of glossy kind of plasticky look to give him the face screen more so than just a black paint over whatever that is but maybe that's a, asking a bit too much of the toy who knows uh he he looks very sinister uh, and i suppose this brings me on to my only complaint of uh, the toy and it's the fact that it is a deluxe size toy i really do think they should have made him a voyager if he was bigger he would have looked uh, a lot better standing next to the rest of the transformers because at present, he just feels, at least to me anyway, a little on the short side. But let's have a look at this guy's articulation now. So let's get straight into it. His head moves at this weird angle. It does go all the way around. Uh, and it doesn't really turn left and right, just at this really odd angle. Unfortunately, it's the way the ball joint's been designed uh, for his neck joint. It's, it's odd. It's not great. Uh, it can go up slightly or can get hunched down again. I like it more hunched. Uh, and he can look up, but because of the spring gimmick, he can't really hold the position there. It just kind of flicks back down. Uh, it's an issue with that gimmick. The arms do move out a little bit on that joint. And I'll try and fiddle these around, but it does go all the way around. It is at that slight angle as well, if you notice the elbow joint or shoulder joint. Uh, the arms here are interesting. It does have a bicep swivel. Uh, and the first part of this joint is kind of a ball joint here, which is is interesting it does give a bit of movement uh, not as much as the other one but it can go inwards as well because it as i mentioned is a ball joint 
Uh, it does have another joint here, of course, which is the real elbow joint, as I like to say, where he gets all of his arm articulation or his arm movement at that point. So he can go quite far with it. Uh, and then you've got this joint here, which bends inwards. It looks a bit silly, but you can get him to face palm himself, which is kind of fun. Uh, it doesn't look great when you do it, but you can work around with it and make it work a little bit better if you choose to, of course. Uh, in terms of like chest articulation, he does have a ab crunch. Uh, it's only slight here at the back. You can notice it. That's literally all it does, and I think it's just to uh, accentuate his hunch. Kind of like what they did with Starscream for the first edition. A lot better, granted, but it does have a waist swivel as well. Uh, the legs can go forward quite a bit, and they go a little bit back, uh, but not a huge amount. They can come out, but they does pop off the joint if you do that, apparently. <laughs> uh, yeah. And we do have a thigh swivel here. This is helped by the top of the ball joint, and we do have this cut here, so it can move a fair bit. This joint here will allow you to angle the leg at a slight angle outwards, but it's mainly for artic uh, sorry for transformation purposes. And unfortunately, this knee joint is where he kind of falls flat a little bit. Uh, you can straighten the leg out, so it is like a normal leg, which then gives him knee articulation, but not a huge amount. Uh, but we've got to remember that Soundwave's aesthetic in the show is to have the chicken leg uh, looked, you know, gamed from the movie. So in this mode, he does nothing. Uh, his feet move up and down, uh, and his ankle does the same, but you need to be careful because the ankle uh, doesn't hold him too steadily, which is kind of a shame. This toy really, he's okay for articulation. He would be a lot worse if the arms weren't as as good as they are. If, if you couldn't get as many poses out of the arms, it would kind of fall flat on its face just because those legs really, really don't help this toy at all, unfortunately. So here's Soundwave's only accessory. It's laser beak here, which is fantastically integrated into the chest. The designers did a great job here of melding it into the aesthetic of Soundwave. Uh, and having a closer look at Laserbeak, or Ratbeak as I call him, you'll notice he's a little, he's okay. Uh, he's not desperately impressive. Uh, from the back it does look a little bit like a little face with nose and eyes and whatnot, but uh, it's not awful, don't get me wrong, but the wings do move, uh, and they move there as well. They have two joints, as you can see, and it does have a peg here to peg into his hand, but uh, I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, a uh, nice bit of detail there I forgot to mention. He pegs in nicely to Soundwave's hand. Uh, obviously, this is the reason why he has the big port uh, in his wing arm here, which didn't make any sense until you put laser beak here uh, to have the classic laser beak, you know, bouncing on Soundwave's arm. Uh, and it works fairly successfully. Uh, what I like to do as well, which I'm sure most have done, is use the wings, and because they're pointy, you can kind of turn them into this claw and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Soundwave can cut up some fools since he doesn't come with any of his weird tentacle things. Uh, so like I say, this accessory is nice. It's great that it's been introduced into the figure. You know, why would they do it? Uh, but on its own, it's not amazing to look at, I would say. So in conclusion, I like this toy. Uh, the Transformers Prime Soundwave is good. I, like I mentioned, I would have liked to have seen it as a Voyager, but hell... You know, it's the economy, you can't have everything you want, I suppose. It's worth picking up just on its looks alone, because it's a really nice uh, toy to look at in comparison to a lot of other looks for Transformers out there, I would say. Even if it's not the most colourful toy, and even if it doesn't have the best leg articulation, it's still a fun one to have, I would say. So, thank you guys for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I will catch you next time for something else. Who knows what it will be, because I have not decided as of yet. Catch you later, guys.